Good morning, everyone. Thanks for the most students to join. Only three of you have joined. Thank you for joining in early. We just wait a couple more minutes uh, for others to join. Okay, we'll uh, begin. This is here. And it's a so we can begin. Uh, can I ask to pray, lead us in prayer, please? Okay, Pastor. Thank you. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, once again, Lord, we thank you so much for this beautiful morning. Lord, we thank you so much for bringing us together once again, Lord, to study your word. Uh, Lord, I especially pray for our dear Pastor, Lord, as uh, she is a uh, uh, guiding and mentoring, Lord, teaching us, Lord, help us to uh, uh, share your word boldly, Lord, and especially pray for all of us, Lord, as we uh, learn from you, Lord, uh, give us a heart to understand, Lord, Holy Spirit, Lord, you guide us, you lead us, in Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Shubhashish. Okay, so on um, this day we began Lesson 5, uh, uh, the doctrine of man. Okay, uh, and if you remember what we learned in the doctrine of man, any points you remember, you can unmute your mic, say an answer, or you can even type it in the chat section. Yes, go ahead, Rebecca. We talked about the doctrine of man, but basically how he is different from God. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? What did you learn to study? Okay, Anita says, what created man in his image? Thank Um, God created man in his image and likeness, as Santa mentioned, and also uh, man consists of spirit, soul, and body, which uh, is the essence and the nature of man. Okay, thank you. So we created, thank you, John, created an image of God, created in his likeness as well. And uh, man consists of uh, body, soul, and spirit. One else. Okay, we began chapter five by saying that uh, you know, by reading Genesis chapter one verse two, uh, where we see that it's clearly stated that God created the universe out of nothing. Ex nucleus, the Latin word, which means out of nothing, and um, it means that uh, you know, uh, before God began to create this universe, or before He began to create the world, uh, nothing else ex existed except God Himself. And we see that God created the whole universe through His Word, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Okay. We saw that all, of all the creatures that God created, only he created man uh, to be his image or in his likeness. So only man is said to be in the image of God. And we try to understand uh, this phrase, uh, image or likeness of God. Uh, so what does the, the, the phrase image or likeness of God mean? Uh, 
it means just that you know uh, man is like God and is created to represent God. So when you say that they created in the image or likeness of God, it means that man is like God and uh, he created to represent um, God. And we saw that the, both the Hebrew words for image and for likeness, uh, it refers to something that is similar uh, but not identical to the thing that represents or is an image of. So the word image can also be used to, of something that represents something else. Okay, uh, so we said that the word image uh, or the word uh, likeness refers to something that is similar but is not identical of the thing that it represents or is an image of. Okay. And so this uh, word image and word likeness, uh, you know, had these clear meanings in the mind of the original readers. Uh, and hence, you know, uh, they understood what, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that when it says that we are created in the image or in the likeness of God, that we are like God in the following ways that we have uh, intellectual ability, moral purity, uh, we have the spiritual nature, we have the creativity, we have the ability to make ethical choices and immorality and uh, dominion over the earth uh, like God. So when we say that God created Adam and Eve in his image or in his likeness, we're basically saying that God is uh, holy, he is righteous, he created Adam and Eve to be holy and righteous. Okay, God is without sin. Uh, he created Adam and Eve uh, to be without sin. Um, and so God would speak to Adam and Eve as a friend would speak to a friend. Uh, God would never die. So he created Adam and Eve never to die. Uh, God uh, gave man a mind uh, so that we can know him, we can understand. Uh, what God speaks to us, or what God speaks to mankind. Uh, God gave man a heart so we can respond to God in love and we can be faithful to him. And also we see choose whether or not to obey God. So when we say that God made uh, uh, man in his image and in likeness, we're basically saying again that God is holy and righteous he created us to be holy and righteous like him. God is without sin. He created Adam and Eve to be without sin so he could relate with them, he could fellowship with them, he could have a relationship with them. Okay? God never dies, he will never die. So he created Adam and Eve never to die. Uh, he gave uh, mankind a mind so that we can understand him, we can know what God is trying to speak to us, what God is revealing to us, we can understand the will, the purposes, and the heart of God. Uh, God gave us a heart so that we can respond back to this God who is love, to this God who is faithful, uh, you know, in love and in faithfulness to Him. He also gave man a will so that we can choose whether or not to obey Him to or to follow him. Okay, so uh, this is basically what we try to understand uh, when we said that you know man is created in the image and in the likeness of God. And we looked at uh, uh, you know how man is in the likeness of God in his moral, mental uh, relationship and um, the spiritual uh, aspect. And uh, you know I think we stopped with the spiritual aspect. Uh, we said that uh, man is primarily a spirit being, though we consist of a made up of a body, soul, and spirit. Uh, we are primarily a spirit being. Uh, that means we have the spiritual life in us, uh, and the spiritual life in us enables us to relate to God as persons, relate to God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, we're able to, in us, to our spirit man, we're able to pray, we're able to praise him, we're able to uh, hear him speak uh, his words to us. Okay, so that is about our spiritual aspect and how we are created in our spiritual aspect 
in the likeness of uh, God. Now, in our physical aspects, uh, we all know that we have a physical body, uh, and our physical bodies have been created by God, okay, as suitable instruments to represent uh, in a physical way our human nature, which has been made in uh, God's own nature. Okay, so through our human nature, uh, we are able to represent, we are able to uh, reflect, we are able to show forth uh, God's nature uh, through our human nature, through our uh, physical attributes, through our characteristics, through the way that we act, the way we react, the way we uh, walk, the way we talk, the way we do things, we are able to either reflect uh, the nature of God or we are able to reflect uh, you know, uh, a carnal nature, which is in line with the uh, uh, with the works of the, of Satan and his uh, and his acts. Okay, so we see that in our bodies, uh, you know, we are created to reflect uh, the nature of God. So when we say in our uh, aspects, we are like God in certain ways. It does not mean that God has a physical body. Uh, what we need to say is that our physical bodies, in various ways, uh, reflect, uh, you know, uh, the character of God, uh, and that is why God created us so that we can manifest His glory. And when we're talking about manifesting the glory of God, we're basically talking about who God is and what He does. So, who God is is reflected through the work of or the power of the Spirit in us. That is a fruit of the spirit, uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And uh, you know what God does is through the again through the power and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in us, in dwelling in us, that is through the nine gifts of the uh, spirit. Okay. So when we say that uh, in our physical aspects, we are trying to reflect. Uh, uh, the nature of God, they're saying God has a physical form, but we're, what we're saying is that our physical bodies in various ways reflect something of God's own character. Okay, So God uh, did not need to create man, but he created us so that he can fellowship with us, he can have communion with us, he can have a relationship with us. He also created us for his own glory. Can okay, one of you please read Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7, please? Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7. Anyone? Isaiah 43, verse Isaiah 43 verse 7, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. So here we see that, uh, you know, you know when we are created uh, and formed by God and we are created for his glory, and it says that everyone who is called by my name, that means when we are known as the children of God, when we are part of his family, that is when we accept him as our Lord and Savior, you know, uh, we reflect his uh, glory, okay? So God created us um, uh, for his own glory and he created us to manifest his uh, glory. And this also shows how important we are to God, okay? Because he created us uh, different from the rest of his creation. He created us in his image and his likeness. He created us to have dominion uh, and to rule over the earth. He created us to manifest his glory. And so we see how important and special uh, and precious we are uh, to God. Okay? And his purpose in life uh, is therefore to fulfill the reason for which God created us. So what is the reason uh, that God created us? Why did he create us? So I invite you to create us. Yes, go ahead, Rubina. 
I think he gave he created us to have dominion on us. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Subhashish. He created us to glorify him. He created us for to manifest his glory. Okay, to basically represent him here on earth, to basically reflect uh, who he is and what he does. Okay. Uh, so Silatoli says, uh, you know, that my voice is cracking. Uh, are others also having the same experience? Is my internet connection good? Are you able to hear me clearly with the interruptions? There's a bit of a crack, uh, Pastor, but I think it's. Yeah, I think initially, uh, I, I think initially when I was doing the recap, I saw even my uh, image on the screen froze. Uh, I realized that, but now after this, we find right. It's it's okay. Uh, I can't say it's it's, uh, it's perfect, but it's quite okay. Okay, so here it shows that my internet strength is uh, signal looks really good. Yeah, there's some network issues. So, uh, anything that you missed out, any point you missed out, you want me to repeat that again? For those of you who kind of missed me, uh, Zitoni, Subhashish, any point that you missed out? Okay, Bria says not really. I'm okay, Pastor. Okay, you're okay, right? Okay. Thank you. Uh, just in case uh, uh, internet uh, connection is weak, then uh, if you missed any point, please uh, uh, speak up or just type in the chat section and then I'll repeat that point again. Okay? Uh, but we basically, first time was doing the recap and we just began by, um, uh, by saying that in, in our uh, you know, physical aspect uh, that we are um, uh, like God, we reflect something of the nature and the character of God. And we said that we are created basically to, uh, you know, for God's own glory, we are created to manifest His glory. And uh, I said that it's, uh, uh, so it, you know, God created us uh, precious. We are very precious to Him. We are important to Him. Uh, because He created us for His glory, He created us to manifest His glory. It shows how important uh, we are. Okay, As the, and I said that man's purpose is to fulfill the reason for which God created us. And I asked the question: What is the reason for which God created us? The reason God created us is, uh, yeah, basically to you know um, uh, have really a relationship. More than that, the purpose is uh, you know so that we can manifest His glory. Here on earth, that means we can represent him here on earth, represent his nature, who he is, and what he does here on earth. Okay, so we've been given this unique uh, privilege, uh, this high position, this uh, great responsibility, and uh, you know we have uh, Jesus who's there to help us, who's the mediator. We have a this power who enables us through the fruit of the spirit, through the gifts of the spirit. Uh, to manifest uh, his glory, which means we are able to fulfill the reason or achieve the purpose for which uh, God basically created us. So God created us uh, uh, for a purpose. That purpose is to glorify him here on earth. Okay. Uh, any questions uh, thus far? Any doubts? Okay, if not, uh, we'll move ahead. If none of you have any questions, okay. Let's go ahead, Mubega. Uh, Pastor, I'm asking just a question. Sure. Uh, when, uh, what did the, I think when God created man, I think we can actually see what he expected of man because this was the first time he talks to him after creation. And I wanted the verse reference that really proves that man was created to glorify God. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, so here we just saw this uh, reference in uh, um, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7, where it says, you know, everyone who's called by my name, whom I created for my glory, who I formed and make. So we created to manifest the glory of God. Thank you, Pastor. If you want more references, then uh, I will put it up in the stream page for you. Uh, I think. Uh, any other questions anyone else has? C can I ask a question? Sure, Isaac. Yeah, what about, um, I, I was thinking about fellowship, because um, in the story of creation, we saw that when God created man, he always came down to the garden to have fellowship with, uh, with man. So I'm thinking fellowship is also one reason why he created us to have fellowship with him. Thank you. Man. Yes, you're right, Isaac. Uh, he created us to have uh, communion with him, fellowship with him, a relationship with him. Uh, that's the reason why he created us. But when we're talking about uh, this, uh, the main purpose we can say is that you know we are created to glorify God. We are created to represent Him here on earth, you know, to fill the earth. And uh, we also see in Scripture, you know, God says, "I will fill the earth by glory as the waters cover the sea." So it's God's desire uh, to fill the earth with His glory, and uh, He wanted, uh, you know, to do that in partnership with uh, us. He has created. And that is why we say that we are important to God. Uh, God did not just create, a, create us to be his slaves or to, the, to be his puppets or to do things what he wants us to do. Uh, he did not create us as puppets or his slaves. He created us uh, in his image and likeness and he gave us uh, the free will to choose from the very beginning. Okay, so we can choose to obey God or we can choose to disobey Him. We can choose to do His purposes or not. Uh, but He makes known His purposes and His plans for us. Uh, and, you know, uh, He's given us the free will to choose. So, uh, irrespective of what we choose, whether we choose to fulfill His purpose of glorifying God, God says, you know, I will fill the earth with my glory as the waters cover the sea. And it's basically not for God to show forth who He is by saying that you know He wants us to manifest His glory. It's when when uh, when God wants His glory to be manifested here on earth or to be covered here on earth. It's basically for us to enjoy who He is, not for Him to get some promotion uh, or some uh, you know uh, advertisement of who He is and uh, you know kind of. Uh, uh, you know, try to go. It's not that. Uh, you know, irrespective of whether we do it or not, God is glorious. He's mighty. Uh, he remains who he is, and he doesn't need anyone to advertise, promote uh, him or his glory. But why he wants us to manifest his glory here on earth is so that uh, people can know him and enjoy who he is. Uh, so when, uh, you know, we uh, basically, when we fellowship with God, it's Him extending all of Himself to us. Uh, so when we are in His presence, we are basically receiving all of who He is. We are enjoying all of who He is. Just imagine enjoying uh, His, uh, all of who He is, is so great, so mighty, you know, uh, so vast, so to say. And this great and mighty God is just extending all of him, all of his glory, all of his presence, all of who he is, his nature and his blessings uh, to us when we, uh, you know, are in his presence. So he wants this whole earth to be filled with uh, uh, his, uh, you know, his glory so that we can just basically enjoy. And that is what we wanted for Adam and Eve to do, is to enjoy God, enjoy all of his enjoy everything perfectly that he has uh, created and the same way he wants us to enjoy him so it's not that uh, responsibility has given us okay come on you uh, glorify me on here on earth and uh, 
you're not doing this well, you're not doing that well. So it means basically that uh, uh, when we can only qualify God to the extent that we experience Him personally. Okay? The extent we experience Him personally is the, is the overflow, that glory will just overflow out of our lives and will extend to others, uh, to people around us and uh, the people we live with, the people we work along with, the people we meet. It'll just uh, reflect, just pour out. So uh, basically, this what you have is what you can give. You can't give what you don't have, right? If you're you're living uh, to please your own, like Paul says, if you're living to please your own carnal nature, then that is what will come as an outflow. So because what you have is what you can basically give to others. But if you're basically feeding your uh, spiritual nature. Uh, then what you are able to pour out to others is the fruit of the Spirit, which should just be evident uh, in your life because that is the outflow of what is uh, inside you. So the, the work that is inside you is uh, you know, what you are basically doing in your relationship with God, how you're relating with God, how to the extent you are uh, you know, in His presence, uh, the extent that you are submitting and you are uh, 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 in living in obedience to Him. Um, you know, it's to that extent, you are being sanctified, and uh, that extent, you will just reflect uh, the glory of God. So we see that when Jesus lived here on this earth, uh, you know, he manifested the sonship glory. That is the glory that we all have, we have to see. Uh, and we see that it was just an overflow of who he is, his own person, his own personality. So it's not something that we uh, have to do or put on. Uh, we cannot put on because, uh, you know, who we are basically in our nature is what we will uh, represent. Okay. Uh, and yes, so uh, I think like you said, our relationship with God, our fellowship with God is very important because out of that uh, relationship will be, uh, you know, will be seen what we manifest, whether we manifest uh, uh, the glory of God that is an outcome of our personal relationship with Him, or we manifest into the flesh, which is uh, an outcome of our uh, more of our feeding our carnal nature and giving room to uh, to the works of the evil one in our lives. So that help, Isaac. Yes, it's okay, ma'am. I, I I only remember something when we were young in primary school. They asked this question in our religious uh, 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 studies. Why did God make you? I will answer simply, God made, God made us to know him, love him, and to serve him. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Yeah, that's a good answer. And, uh, uh, and as children, that's a perfect answer to give. Uh, but when we grow up, you know, uh, like Paul says, we don't no longer feed on uh, just uh, milk, but we move on to eating solid food. So here you are in a situation where yeah. <laughs> you can... Uh, understand theology, and so you can uh, you, know, you can get deeper into it. But what answer you gave as a child is perfect, and and yes, it is a it's the right answer as well. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Good questions. Thank you. Any more? If you have any more questions. Okay, if not, we will uh, move on to the next point, the essential nature of man. Uh, we know that man basically consists or is made up of a body, soul, and spirit. Uh, where do we see this? Uh, we read this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Uh, can one of you please read 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, please? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Uh, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, John. So sweet to hear uh, Shatina's voice. Okay. So we see that uh, man is primarily a spirit being, having a soul and a liver and a uh, uh, living in a body, and we find this uh, 
uh, trisection uh, mentioned here very clearly. So we have a spirit being, uh, we have a soul and a living body. So you are all uh, clear with that. Uh, what do we understand by soul? Consists of mind, will and emotions. Thank you, John. So soul consists of uh, mind, will and uh, emotions. And we also saw that our spirit man uh, is primarily, uh, you know, uh, what relates to God who is a spirit. Okay. So we have to, like this verse in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23, it says, you know, uh, the God of peace will sanctify you and will keep your whole spirit, soul and body blessed to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's look at um, uh, our, the three aspects. Spirit, uh, the Greek it's pneuma. Uh, so our spirit man is, or the spirit being, or the spirit part of us is the eternal part of us, which means it will never die, it can never be destroyed. It is something that is eternal. It's also a part of us that relates to God, it relates to the spirit realm, it relates to the spiritual realm. Uh, when we are born again, we receive the life and nature of God in our spirit. Uh, so our human spirits receive the life and nature of God. And we see that when we're born again, the Holy Spirit comes and indwells in us, it dwells in our spirit. Uh, in the Bible, uh, you know, wherever, in, in certain places where we read these words, uh, belly, or you know, the words inner man or innermost being, uh, it's referring to the spirit of man. Okay, so in the Bible, wherever we read this word belly, heart, or we read the words inner man or innermost being, it's used to refer to the spirit of man. Okay, then uh, James chapter 2, verse 26 uh, tells us that uh, physically we will die one day. Uh, but, you know, when the physical death occurs, the spirit leaves the body. Okay, James chapter 2, verse 26. Can one of you read that, please? James chapter 2, verse 26. James 2, 26, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Thank you. Uh, so here we see that um, you know uh, a body without the spirit is dead. Um, so when our physical body dies, you know our spirit leaves the body. Next, we will look at the soul. And the Greek word is psyche, um, and the soul is the psychological part of us. Uh, it's the mind, the will, and the emotions. Uh, so with our soul, we, we think, we reason, we can imagine, uh, we can feel. Uh, the soul can either be carnal, okay, or it can be also uh, spirit-filled according to what we are feeling, uh, our carnal nature, or whether we're feeling our spirit-filled nature, the soul can be carnal. When we say carnal, we mean fleshly. Uh, the soul can also be renewed and be transformed uh, so that we can uh, be like God, we can reflect his nature, we can reflect uh, his attributes uh, through our uh, soul. So it depends on which kind of nature that you're feeding. The more that you're feeding your calm and lustful, uh, uh, fleshly desires, that is when you're, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, when you are feeling the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, uh, it means that you are being very carnal or very fleshly, um, and it you know, it produces uh, uh, does not produce the life of God, the Zoe life of God, but it produces just death. It gives uh, uh, rise to the deeds of the flesh, which is with the demonic works. Uh, but when we are transformed. Uh, the renewing of our mind, uh, and we would be like Christ, we would reflect his nature, uh, we would reflect his uh, likeness, and we would also be renewed in our uh, soul. Now, our soul is like a processor. Okay? It processes information that we receive from uh, the spirit, and we all, it also processes the information that it receives from, the, uh, from our body. Okay? 
So our spirit man, our body, uh, you know, actually uh, collects uh, uh, inputs from uh, the world around through our five senses. So our uh, bodies, uh, you know, uh, receives uh, inputs, collects inputs through our five senses. What is our five senses? Which are our five senses? Seeing, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. Yes, go ahead, Isaac. It's calling seeing. Seeing is one of the five senses. Smelling. Yes. Thank you. So it's uh, seeing, uh, hearing, uh, smell, uh, taste, and touch. And through these five senses, uh, you know, are. Uh, our bodies uh, receive or collect inputs from the physical world and our spirit also responds to the five senses of uh, hearing, uh, smell, touch, uh, taste um, and uh, so we see through our uh, uh, spiritual eyes uh, in the spiritual realm, we hear uh, through our uh, spiritual ears, God is speaking to us, uh, taste and see that the Lord is good, is you know, that verse is basically we get taste the goodness uh, of God. We can also experience touch. Uh, this, uh, Holy Spirit, uh, you know, communicates through, um, uh, through this, uh, this uh, sense of touch. Okay, I'm sure you will heard, learn this when you did uh, learn the Holy Spirit in the last semester. Okay, and also through feeling. So when we feel... Uh, you know, stirring in our heart, we know that God wants us to respond, to do something about it. Uh, when we feel, um, you know, when we feel that we don't have a good feeling, uh, you know, that God is telling us, don't do it, don't step into that, uh, uh, don't uh, go there, or uh, don't relate with that person, because we don't have a very pleasant, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, feeling inside, okay? Or uh, when there is uh, a deep stirring in our heart, we know God wants us to act immediately, do something about it, respond uh, to it. Um, also through our taste, sometimes through bitterness, you know, God is telling us uh, a bitter taste we experience. God is telling us that, um, you know, uh, this is not the right thing. Or uh, sometimes to smell, we can, you know, when we're just praying, we can uh, get a good fragrance. It might not be... Uh, coming from anywhere, but we just know that God is pleased with us. Uh, he's just uh, pleased with uh, what we are doing, our praise, our worship, our thanksgiving that we are offering to Him. He is, or He's just extending His uh, goodness, His favor in our life, uh, maybe because of the situation that we're going through. So, through our spirit senses, I'm sure you learned this when you studied about the Holy Spirit the last semester. Uh, also through our five sp uh, senses uh, in our spirit man, we can experience or we can hear or we can um, uh, know what God is speaking to us. And so whatever we are receiving through our five senses in our spirit man or through our body, that goes to our soul and our soul processor and it processes the inputs that we receive from our spirit man and from our body. Okay. Uh, the next one is our body, uh, the Greek word is soma, okay, so the body we all know is the physical part of us uh, and uh, to which we connect uh, to the physical natural world, uh, we connect and also relate to other persons or to other people, okay, and like I said that, uh, you know, our body has um, uh, receives input from the physical world through our five uh, senses, and uh, you know, um, and it feeds it into the soul, and our soul is the processor. Okay, uh, in the Bible, the body is to as an outer man, um, and the natural evil desires of our body and our soul uh, together comprises of what the Bible refers to as the flesh. So wherever we see flesh, carnal nature, fleshly desires, whatever. It's talking about our natural evil desires of our body and of our okay. So the last bit is uh, that when God created man, when he created male and female, he created them both 
in his image, he created both of them in his likeness, so both of them he created equal, uh, and that means that both of them are equally important to God, equally valuable to God, and we know this verse that says, uh, you know, for God there is no Jew nor Greek, male nor female, all are, uh, you know, all are one in his sight. Uh, so, you know, we should give equal respect, equal importance, equal value to both, uh, uh, you know, uh, man and woman, and we need to give both of them equal honor. Like Paul also minds Timothy as he is overseeing the churches at Ephesus. You know, he says, give honor to um, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, and also to uh, widows. Okay, so it's reminding Timothy, is reminding the church that we need to honor everyone because we are all created equal. Uh, and we are all important in the sight of God. Okay. However, there is differences in the roles of both women and men, or men and women, and these uh, roles are equally important before God. Okay. So that is the end of uh, chapter five, uh, the doctrine of uh, man. Anyone has any questions? Any questions? No questions? Okay, uh, Lubeka, just another reference, uh, John chapter 17, which is the high priestly prayer of God. Of Jesus, um, and Jesus says there that you know it was for I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. So we see that even uh, Jesus, being man, um, you know, uh, purpose was to glorify God. So he says, I brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me, and now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had before. Uh, with you before the world began. I've already uh, elaborated or thought about this when we, when we spoke about um, the humanity of uh, Jesus Christ in Christology. Okay, and then we also see that, you know, uh, we asked, uh, uh, Jesus asked the Father to give us the sonship uh, glory. Okay. Um, we read in First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-three, regarding the sanctification of spirit, soul, and body. Yes. So, uh, what would the sanctification of spirit mean? I use my question. Uh, so we know the the character, our mind, will, emotions, everything consists in the soul, and also yes. uh, the works that we do uh, in affects our body. But I just want to know what would be it, what would it mean to say the sanctification of spirit means? Uh, so when we look at ourselves, we don't look at ourselves in three separate compartments. Uh, that because the spirit man is uh, having the light and nature of God, uh, that it is, uh, you know, it is uh, it, it's separate. And so only the soul and the body has to be worked upon. But uh, we look at it, we are one whole that is created as a whole. So when uh, our body suffers, it's also our soul and our spirit man also suffers. So when our body, uh, when we are physically sick, we don't really feel like praying. Uh, we, uh, we don't really feel like, uh, you know, or when we, are, when we are disappointed about something that has happened, or we, uh, you know, we have, uh, the doctors have told us we have some terminal sickness. Uh, you know, we get angry with God, uh, we're upset with God, or we're questioning God, and our spirit man uh, is also uh, affected as well as our, uh, as our soul. So it's um, all three of them work in perfect unity, just like the Trinity, we are also created uh, as one whole. And so if, uh, if uh, through our body, we're just looking at our body and we're saying we are always responding to the carnal nature, 
it's going to reflect our spirit man. How is it going to reflect our spirit man? It's because our, uh, our carnal nature is being fed, it's growing, our spirit man is being subdued. That means we are not going in the things of God because we are not spending time with God. We can't hear God, uh, we can't hear Him speak, we do not know because we're always listening to our carnal nature. But also, the, or always into a carnal nature when we are because we are feeding our uh, carnal uh, nature, okay. And so, a spirit man is being uh, is is dying, is and slowly will become dead. That is when our conscience will also be dead to doing something. So, we see that even when people say they are born again, uh, but you know, they are doing things, and we are saying, How can they do this? How can they live like this? How can they behave like this? Uh, so it's we don't look at it separately. It's when uh, whatever happens uh, in our body and our soul is also affecting our spirit. The same way, if we are feeding our uh, spirit man, okay, then our, our carnal man or our carnal fleshly desires is being subdued. Then that it's it's going to get dead in that area because our spirit man is being uh, fed. That is what is being processed. In our soul, and what is being processed in our soul is what is being reflected to our body. So, when I'm uh, living a carnal nature and receiving things of the world that is going to my soul, that is going to affect even my spirit man. So, all three have to be uh, sanctified, yes, uh, to the extent that you know uh, we submit and surrender all of these three areas spirit, uh, soul, and a body. We submit all of those areas and uh, to that extent, uh, you know, we are able to obey God because when we obey, it's not just our body is doing something and our spirit is there somewhere, you know, our soul is doing something else. No, it's we are all functioning together. So everything is being uh, affected. Yeah, good question. Thank you, John. Anyone else? Yeah, if not, uh, uh, we'll end class here. Is that okay? Uh, just a reminder that, uh, you know, Monday is your uh, Christology test, okay? But we will have the, uh, the class. I will post the question paper later on and I will give you uh, uh, two days. Is two days okay with all of you to complete the paper? Yes, boss. Two days or one day is fine. What about uh, the others from, uh, you know, from the other uh, countries? Rubega and I. Say that, one day. Say that again, man. Let's, let's see how you put clearly. Uh, can you please say that again? Sorry, I did not understand you. Yeah, the question you are talking about, the papers and yeah. the time for completion. Say it again so that we can hear clearly and they respond. Yes, it'll just be one long question, uh, two uh, just one-liners, and uh, uh, I think about three questions, which is just uh, uh, multiple choice. So just one uh, paragraph kind of a question. The other two will be just one-liner answers, and um, uh, three questions will just be multiple choice. Two days is enough for me. Thank you, Paul. What about the others? I, I, I'm, going, I'm going in for three days. Some of <laughs> us are from deprived, they are deprived background. We are, you know, <laughs> from where we are, it's deprived. Like me, I'm just using my phone. I don't even have access to a computer. I have no light in my house. So let's say three days, maxi maximum or so, or minimum. Uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Uh, uh, yeah, I will, will give you three days then. Fine. So those who want to submit in one day, two days, uh, but the rest of you can just have it uh, take two days. Yes, success. Uh, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Morning. I'm going to do that three days. Three days okay. because uh, a lot of assignments on my hands. But I'm going to do it three days now. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we'll give you three days. Those who want to submit in one day, uh, two days, you can take one, two, 
Oh, but, uh, uh, you know, we'll say three days, so on a few weeks, up within three days. Okay, and I'll give you a clear uh, guideline. So please read the guidelines, instructions. It will just help you. It will help me as well. And uh, I'm sure you'll be able to do it. The, the whole thing about having the test is not for you to get grades. Uh, I just wanted to know how much you've understood, and this is theology, it's very important. So I request all of you to please take time to read through your notes, even though it's going to be an open book uh, test, but please read, uh, understand, uh, and write. Okay? Yeah. okay, thank you everyone for joining class. Uh, have a good day and a good weekend, and I will see you all. Okay, bye.